Ashlyn, are you right there? I've got Brittany's computer, darling. So I just I was like, Ashlyn, isn't she here? She's trying to write to you, Brittany. Sorry. Anyway, so, so the, the new life has come. If you become a Christian, if you become a Christ follower, it says that you are literally a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. It doesn't mean that you've arrived. It means a new life has begun. And I want you to understand that when you sincerely surrender your life to Jesus, you become a brand new person. Now, I want you to think of it like this. Now, you guys were not born in the the day and age that I was, but I was born a long time ago. When I was in high school, it was the 1980s, and I think we had the coolest style back then. Um, 80s are coming back, by the way, but that's okay. Y'all, you you guys, you think it's cool, but you probably don't think it's cool if your parents say that they were from the 80s, but we really had cool clothes back then. But if I were to be up here wearing my high school clothes, you guys would probably laugh at me, and I'm not doing that. Don't worry. But I want you to get something tonight that I think will really help you in your relationship with the Lord and how to live a new life. Because here's one thing that I know about many of you, because I've had conversations with you. A lot of you feel like you get stuck. You give your life to Jesus, but you get stuck and maybe you, you fell into sin or something happened and you feel like, am I really saved? Does Jesus really love me? Does this mean I'm going to go to hell now? Does, does this mean God gave up on me? Does this mean I'm really a Christian? Am I not really a Christian? Did I become? what? what? There's a lot of questions that you guys deal with. So I want you to understand when you surrender your life to the Lord, when you say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of your, my life, I, I want you to forgive me of my sin, and I want to be totally living for you. If, if that is how you want to live, the Bible says that the old is gone and the new is beco- becoming. It's starting. It's a beginning. It's a new thing. Now, I want you to think of old life and new life like a wardrobe, okay? So I want you to think about the Bible giving you the opportunity when you give your life to Jesus, you now every day can choose. When I wake up and I go to get dressed for the day, I can go to my old wardrobe or I can go to my new wardrobe. I can put on my old coat or I can put on my new coat. I want you to think of your walk with Jesus like a clothes closet for the moment. Every single day, you all have the choice to get dressed from the old you or the new you. Because that's the thing about the Lord. He gives you the choice. The Bible says when you give your life to Jesus, the old is gone. That means he has washed away your sins. He has washed away your shame. He wants to take away your pain. And he says, I am beginning a new work in you. The Bible actually says that he who began a new work in you is faithful to complete it. But the one thing that we see over and over and over in the New Testament, it says if you continue in your faith, we've got to hold on to Jesus. So every single day, and we're going to see in some of these verses, every single day you and I have the choice. When we wake up after a wonderful night of sleep, I get up and I'm getting ready for the day. And I have two closets in front of me. And I have the choice. I can put on the old Dina, which lived a life of feeling rejected and being jealous and being, you know, I mean, I was spunky and fun and all the things, but I had some, I had some broken things in my life. But then when I gave my life to Jesus and I realized I have a whole new identity in Jesus, my life changed. But I still had the choice and the opportunity and the privilege every single day to wake up and go, which closet am I going to choose from? Am I going to go to the old closet and put on my old jean jacket? Because let's face it, you all probably have that. I don't know if it's an old t-shirt, an old pair of sweatpants, your favorite pajamas, your favorite whatever. I don't know. My husband has some shirts that he still has that he's had for 30 some years and they have holes in them and they're all painted and and I keep trying to throw them away and he's like, no, don't throw that away. I'm like, honey, you have new shirts. We can afford to buy you a new t-shirt. He's like, but it's so 
comfortable. And I bet every one of us in here, we have that one piece of clothing that is so comfortable. And I'm not kidding. I will show you his drawer. He's got rips and he doesn't care. He's like, no, when he goes to work in his wood shop, he just wants to wear a comfortable old raggedy shirt. He doesn't care. He doesn't want something new because it's comfortable. And that's the thing that we have issue with every single day is often what happens is we wake up and we're comfortable going back to our normal old self because it's where, well, it's where we have created all of our habits. It's where we've hung out. It's what we're familiar with. Even if it's not good, it's comfortable because it's what we knew for so long. But what we forget is when we give our lives to Jesus, he's going, hey, come over here. I, I bought you a whole new wardrobe. Like I paid a high price for you to have an entirely brand new wardrobe. A brand new wardrobe. And I get to stand there each morning and go, now, I'll be honest with you, sometimes... I'll go, I, I mean, I try every day. I'm, I'm putting on, because I'm putting on Jesus. I want to wear Jesus every day. But as the day goes on and circumstances come and disappointments happen, every once in a while, if I, like, I little, take a little break out of the day and I find myself wanting to go back to the old closet and put back on the coat of whatever, self-pity, anger, fill in the blank. I don't know what your issues are, whatever it may be. But here's what I know, and somebody asked me, where's Sydney at? Sydney asked me a question a couple weeks ago. We were talking, hi, Sydney. We were talking about what's the difference between the devil, the flesh, and the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I don't know that we ever got to finish the, the comment or the conversation. But here's what I know. Sometimes when we give our lives to Jesus, we're here at Vox, we're here at this youth group, and we're dancing, freedom. I've got it, I've got it. We're like, woo, the cross was enough for my freedom. We're singing, we're dancing, we're celebrating all the things. Broken melodies, you won't deny a broken melody, a humble heart, all the things. We're like, woo, Jesus. But then tomorrow morning when we wake up and we have reality hit us in the face, things are a little bit different because not everybody from Vox is around you dancing and singing and going, come on, let's worship together. You're faced with a, a reality. And what you need to know is that each day you have the opportunity. Now, sometimes, because the devil doesn't make you do everything. The devil, Satan, there really is a devil and his name is Satan. Okay, he is real. But he's, he's out, he's creating, he's, he's, he's waiting to take people to hell with him. Okay, he's, he's busy doing lots of things. But he's got lots of demonic activity around and all the perversion and all the pain and all the crime and all the yuck you see in the world, that's their fault, not God's, by the way. But there are times where we open ourselves up to demonic activity, okay? There are times where we make decisions, and it may be a really dark corner of that old closet, where we allow, we open ourselves up to demonic things by things that we watch or listen to or participate in. There are some demonic things. That's when we give place for the enemy. The Bible says that we actually can give him a foothold. You know what a foothold is? You know when you, somebody opens a door and you put a foot there and you can't close it because the for, foot's in the way? The scripture says don't give the devil a foothold. And sometimes we do that. But that's not always the case. That's got to be an extreme thing where you've really opened yourself up to, you know what, I don't want to live for God. I'm giving place for the enemy. And you're, you're, that's when you're choosing to sin and stay in your sin over and over and over. And you don't want freedom. You don't want to get out. You want to stay stuck in your dirty sin. That's when you've just said, you know what, devil, you can just kind of, you know, not that you're saying, devil, you can have me, but you've given him place. That's a different thing. The flesh is what we live in. That's our human nature. It's our, it's our everyday habits. And every once in a while, probably more often than we like, we just live our everyday life. We love Jesus, but our flesh gets in the way. This is our earth suit that we have to stay in for the rest of our lives, right? And sometimes because of just our desires, our sinful nature, we get angry at things, we get tempted with things, we get drawn into things, we get, it goes on and on and on. Our flesh gets in the way. 
But then when you get convicted about that and you realize, oh, wait, what I'm doing right now, the way I'm acting right now, the way I'm speaking right now, the thing I'm participating in right now, the thing I'm looking at or listening to or talking about or whatever it is, oh, it doesn't feel right. And you go, Lord, I have put on the wrong shirt. I pulled out the wrong shirt. This is the shirt that I wore a long time ago, and this doesn't bring back the right memories, and I don't want to wear... No, I don't want to wear this buckle shirt anymore. I need to get rid of this buckle shirt. This, this, this represents something very painful for me. I, I want to lay that down. And I'm going to get out. And yes, Jesus, I, I'm going to let you give me a new shirt. I'm going to let you give me a new coat. So we have this choice every single day because the Bible is true. If you have said, yes, Jesus, be my Lord, just because you sin doesn't mean you've lost your eternity, you've lost your salvation. If you choose to, if you say yes to Jesus and you choose to say, never mind, Jesus, I don't want anything to do with you. I'm going the other way. I'm going to live for myself for the rest of my life. That's different. It's not what I'm talking about. But I'm asking you today to understand Jesus has made you new and improved. Jesus wants you to live a new and improved life. He wants you to be brand new. And he wants you every day to go, oh, that comfortable jacket is calling my name. But you know what? Nope. I'm going to dress from the new wardrobe. Listen to this verse. I love it. So good. 2 Peter 1.3 says this. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. God has given us everything we need for godliness. You know what that means? You and I have no excuse. Doesn't mean we're going to get it right every day and every time. Because we won't. Because we're human. And this comfortable closet keeps calling our name. But the good news is that I have a whole new wardrobe that I can put on every day that I choose to do it. And the more that I wear this new wardrobe, the more peace I'm going to have, the more joy I'm going to have, the more hope I'm going to have, the more I'm going to be so convinced that I'm loved by God, the more I'm going to be so excited to worship him, to praise him, the more I'm going to get out of the Bible when I'm reading it. All of the, all of the benefits of feeling so close to God, that comes when I'm wearing my new wardrobe. See, when I put on my old wardrobe, I'm like, you know, you know, I've heard it from so many of you. I don't feel close to God. I'm not feeling close to God. It's probably because you've got on some old clothes. You probably got on some of your old wardrobe. And you've gotten into some of your old habits. But can I remind you tonight that when you meet Jesus Christ... He changes you from the inside out, and he makes you new and improved. Listen, God made you, and he loves you just the way he made you. Jesus loves you so much, but he does not leave you the same. When you encounter Jesus for real, you are never the same. Do you hear me? When you encounter Jesus for real, you are never the same. You are never the same when you really encounter Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't still be tempted to go to this old closet because you will, because you're human, and that's okay. But you remember, wait, no, that's the old me. The old life is gone. The new life has come. Devil, I am not falling for that trap. Flesh, I am not giving into these temptations. I've got a new life. Jesus said, a new life has begun in me. I don't have to hold on to the pain. I don't have to hold on to the rejection. I don't have to be angry about everything anymore. I don't have to, I don't have to live like that. I don't have to fill my life with lies and fill my life with fill in the blank. I don't know what your things are. I don't know what your vices are. But you don't have to live like that. You don't have to. Listen to this. Galatians 3, verse 26. says, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on what? New clothes. 
Let's read it again. For you all are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Do you know that's literally what the Bible says? When you are, you are united with Jesus, you are given new clothes. You are given in life, spiritually speaking, you have been given new wardrobe, new clothes when you're united with Jesus. Now, he says these words in baptism, and some of you might be going, okay, does that mean if I got water baptized, if I got water baptized and I'm baptized, and, and that means I can have new clothes, I have to be baptized to get new clothes, what does that mean? Well, let me say this, if you have, if you have given your life to Jesus, and you have not gotten water baptized, I beg you, get baptized, because Jesus said, get baptized, because it is a perfect display and representation of, you go in the water under the water and it's a representation of the old being washed away and the new it's dying to yourself and coming up new in christ that's what water baptism is but there are four different baptisms that the bible talks about i don't have time to get into it tonight but one of them is when you give your life to jesus you're baptized in christ that's scripture when you become born again you're baptized meaning the word baptized means submerge you go under it means you become a part of and so another baptism is you you're baptized into the body of christ you're part of a family of god that is worldwide everybody who loves jesus you're part of that family another baptism is water baptism which is an action that we do that we take after we've given our life to jesus when you're Say, hey, when you're surrendering to Jesus, you get water baptized. It's, oh, I am living a new life. And the fourth baptism, those of you that have been taken alpha, we just learned about it last weekend, is Holy Spirit baptism. You're baptized with the Holy Spirit. That means the Spirit of the living God is living on the inside of you. And when you have the Holy Spirit, listen, when you're putting on that new wardrobe and you're walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, look out world. Look out world. Now that's the kind of Christian that the devil hates, but the Lord is going, come on, I need more of you. Come on, let's turn the world upside down. Come on, let's turn the world on fire. Let's go. Are you still with me? Are you listening? All right, 1 Peter 1.14. I got to bring this. I'm coming to a close. I'll close soon. 1 Peter 1.14 says this. So you... Talking to all of us, you must live as God's obedient children. He says, don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. You know, he's saying, hey, don't slip back. Don't slip back into your old ways. Quit waking up every day and going, oh, I just want to go to the new closet because it's easier. All my friends from school live in that closet. They all wear this kind of shirt. They wear this kind of pants. They wear these kind of shoes. They wear this kind of wardrobe. I want to hang out in this closet. And Peter's writing a letter to Christians, and he's saying, hey, don't slip back. You didn't know any better then. You didn't know Jesus back then. He's saying, you've got a new wardrobe. He, Jesus has made you new and improved. Act like it. Talk like it. Look like it. Live like it. Because when you do all that, you'll feel like it. The thing that hurts me the most is when teens, you young people, you don't understand how loved you are. You are so loved by God. I mean, so loved. And he has so much potential for you. But what happens is we want to fit in so much that we get stuck in the old me and we forget that he really is working on a brand new me. Like he made me new and he has so much for me. But because you can't see it all yet, you get afraid and you want control. And God says, hey, no, 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 no. I've made you new and approved. Let me finish the work that I've started in you because it's really a great work. He says, don't slip back into your old ways. Don't put on your old clothes. Romans 6, verse 11. We'll start there real quick. He said, so you should also consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Listen to this next part. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to your sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Not your mouth, 
not your eyes, not your ears, not your hands, not your feet, not your heart. He says, don't let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. You know what he's saying there? It's your choice. Teenagers, listen to me. It is your choice every day to live for Jesus or not. It's your choice to put on the old wardrobe or the new wardrobe. It's totally your choice. But the amazing thing is you've been giving, given an all expense paid free access to this new life in Jesus. Remember what I said a few moments ago that scripture says God has given you everything you need to live a godly life. We have no excuse. We can, we just don't always want to because the old closet feels better or it's just more comfortable. Sometimes we like just being in the rut because it's comfortable. But God says, oh, gosh, let me talk to you. Let me speak to you. Let me pour hope into you. Let me pour joy into you. Let me let you understand my love. Let me speak to you. Let me use you for my glory. Let me bless you. Let me show you my favor. Let me show you my wonders. Let me do miracles in you and through you. That's what God wants. Don't squelch him. Go to the new closet. Don't let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sin uh, to sinful desires. Can you go back to that Romans six? Do not let is it, yeah, it is. do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life, new and improved. Fox people, you are new and approved. You are not who anybody else says you are. You are who he says you are. You are who he says you are. Instead, he says, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have been given, or now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. There's so much that I want to say tonight. I, I hope that you're getting something out of this tonight. I hope that you're seeing what I'm saying with the fact that you have been given new life in Christ. The old is gone. The new has become. And all the Lord is saying is, hey, let me have every part of your heart. Let me have every part of your life. Let me give you a new wardrobe. Put on the new clothes. Let me soak you in my love. Let me use you for my glory. Don't feel stuck. Don't feel unloved. Don't feel unworthy. Don't feel, quit going into the trap of the old closet. Come and get access to that new closet because God's given you everything you need for godliness.